welcome back to the IMDb Live at San Diego Comic Con. And I'm here with the cast and creators of Rick and Morty. Give it up for them, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, when last we left our heroes, they gave you 70 episodes and half a billion dollars. Is that, <laughs> is that what I read correctly? Not yet, on the money side. <laughs> what, yes. uh, what was it like um, getting, being told we want this much? Generally, TV shows are like, hey, we want this, just give us this little, we gotta see if people like it. They're asking you for the next five, 10 years of your lives. Yes, yeah. yeah I mean, it felt like uh, permission to ask for a bunch of money and, and, and also like actually permission to quit all my other jobs. Like I, it was the, it was been my fantasy for 20 years to just yes. have a regular job. Somebody Very told rare. me somebody was like, uh, he's so happy he bought a castle. Did you yeah. buy a castle? <laughs> I, I, I bought a <laughs> hacienda a in Valley Village. <laughs> it's a kind of a, it's as much of a castle as a Wisconsin boy needs. It was described to me in very grand terms. Um, <laughs> I'm, a, as you guys are well aware, I'm a massive fan. I thought this season uh, was absolutely incredible. Uh, you're doing things in animation that people can't even do in live action. You're doing things that are so intimidating that like I shudder, I look forward to watching an episode of Rick and Morty, but at the same time I'm like, this is gonna make me feel like I'm lazy. I know it. <laughs> and then I watch what real comedy I is. I still haven't like, watched Damn Atlanta. It. You don't have to feel bad. Like <laughs> I, I'm, I'm such so a- So you have a bar too I, I'm where you're so like- I'm so cowardly. I don't wanna watch anything Donald Glover's been doing because I'm afraid I'll never do anything. Right? Because remember yeah. that Brian Wilson story about him listening to the White Album? Yes, yes, And just yes, yes. freaking out and, and quitting? And that broke and his like, brain. Yeah, yeah, it yeah, like broke was, him. It, yeah, he, he never finished It's uh, tough. That's smile. the creative thing that people don't- talk about is like it's competitive and whatnot and when you see people doing stuff you're like they did it they're at the top of the mountain yeah, yeah. But everyone has that you know you, oh. like, everything. you ride I mean, the wave though it's, right? so mine like is very like I'm, I'm a hack I'm an them. idiot I suck Collectively. you know that's that's that, like, like you watch something amazing you're like I'll, I, I, I quit I, I'll never yeah. be able to I watched to do a little anything. bit of Bojack Horseman I watched like their Halloween episode where it was like four different like decades going on I was like it really made me feel like a horrible hack. Like I, was, I, I regret. <laughs> but watching there's, out. but I think you guys, like you're in their DNA. They don't get to do that unless you guys do what you did first. Now, because we're talking about something that is absolutely funny, but it's, it's, this is a show that goes into the mind and the heart and the soul at the same time. It kind of talks about the humanity of being a human through the eyes of one of the most reprehensible human beings. Well, and the meaning, meaninglessness of infinite, inf infinite. You know, the idea of infinite relatives and yeah. it becomes just meaningless like so life you know, has no like, meaning yeah the cynicism we, we knew that we knew that millennials were all talk about their optimism we knew they had a nihilistic streak <laughs> underneath you wanted to test it you out you can't be that much of a team player and have that bad punctuation and not secretly believe exactly. there's no god yeah. based on that you. i'm curious what is the audience like ladies yeah have you met the fans face to face and what is a we just did what's just a now. summer fan like what's a beth fan like uh, they're they're shaking and nervous. That's about it. I'm <laughs> and they're really no, sweet. They, they so. no, they love they love the show and they love these characters. And I think like in a lot of ways, summer all everybody every character that you guys have on the show sort of represents different microcosms of different kinds of people. And so it feels good for everybody to watch, right? And it's been I such a know. cool experience. Like my first uh, Comic Con experiences have been through Rick and Morty, and like the first year. We came and it was right before the show aired, and then the next year there's like a few Ricks, and then the next year a sea of Mr. Poopy Buttholes, and it's been so cool to watch like the growth of the show through Comic Con and how unbelievably excited the fans are, and the time they go in to yeah. make their costumes. Like we did our panel yesterday, and there was a group of people that came up to ask the a question, yeah. and it was evil, just like people evil did the Morty. vindicators. Oh, yeah, it was, oh, yeah. It was yeah. like yeah. top yeah. notch. Was top there was notch. like the ant guy. Yeah, million ants. Million Will you Crocky text Bot. Bill Lawrence everything you just said? So I just like to. <laughs> He's on the live feed. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> He's right here. Come on up. No, no, no. Um, you had a big season last year for Beth, particularly. I was deeply invested in the storyline as well. And when it got to the moment where you were just like, "All right, shoot me if you have to," like I didn't even know if you were a clone at that point or whatnot. But one thing that I walked away very happy with was, um, and I know it's completely against Rick's eth ethos, is you and Jerry got back together. Like, it brought you back together. I'm a romantic. When I watch that show, I enjoy the humor of, like, beat Jerry down to a nub. But the only thing he has in life is Beth. And when you separated them, I was like, oh, God, they're so cruel. <laughs> but I love that even though she's, like, getting back, she's still, like, simple, kind, simple. <laughs> Jerry. Man, yeah, 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 yeah. A lot of simple is said a lot of times. Yeah, yeah. Now, they said that you guys, did you roll a clip? 
from an episode? Yeah, we showed an animatic uh, uh, for the, the the Space Snakes episode, which is a season four episode. And then we also showed a little animation uh, introducing Glutie, a character who was in one episode voiced by Taika Waititi. Taika Waititi? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and they made Funko Pops of them that came out like like a couple days ago. So people were like, "Who the who the hell is this <laughs> character?" Like, and on his forehead it says, "Do not develop my app." Like tattooed on his forehead. Right. Like Rick literally tattooed this on his forehead because he wants to really develop an app so bad. And you know, of course, Jerry Jerry gets sucked into it after being explicitly warned by Rick, "Do not develop his app." I tattooed it on his. Fucking forehead. Right. But the number one rule of app development: don't follow the rules, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, Taika does a voice. Who else is doing a voice this year? Who else? Uh, you bring Paul it Giamatti does a voice in nice. a Crazy Train episode. Uh, Sam Neill, Kathleen Turner. Uh, 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 we're forgetting. Uh, Sam Neill is amazing, Sam man. So good. Oh, wait, oh, yeah, that's Thinking right, Matthew Broderick. Yeah, dude, what the hell? That's Liam a... Cunningham from Game of Thrones. Yeah, he was just up here the other day. Yeah. He's awesome yep. as well. He's a, he's a sweetheart. Did he, he talk about Rick and Morty when he was here, or did he just, like, pretend like it wasn't? <laughs> yeah, was it just, I, yeah, yeah, there was another TV show that Thrones. he would not stop Thrones talking yeah. about. <laughs> I, 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 he, he was the last person to from Game of Thrones that I hadn't yet smothered and lost a relationship with. I think last <laughs> night I, I blew it with him. I'm like, your character is me. I'm the Onion Knight. I lost the fingers of my pride, man. And he was like, that's great. <laughs> Thank you, Sir, Sir Davos Harmon. Please sit down. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, how, how do you approach writing an episode? Like, Because the show feels very written, but at the same time feels incredibly loose. Is there pen to paper or, or Yeah, I mean, this typing? guy this guy does a pass on every script. We have an amazing writer's room. Uh, we break stories together. Uh, and then Dan and I sit in the edit bay for every thumbnail, animatic, and color, and we kind of do a pass in there. Like, it's a bit more, a bit looser version of a pass, or like, like in some cases, uh, where it's like, oh, that we could beat this joke, and then we just riff in the room, and then you'll temp it or I'll temp it, and then eventually go record it with the, with the real actors. Um, yeah, and I think that that process sort of allows us to refine and refine and refine for better. For Some episodes are like good, to, like Pickle Rick was one that was just like, it just flew through production. Right. And then there's other episodes like the Fruity Land with Beth and Rick going in. I mean, that one was one that we, in edit, in color, we were, we were like, you know, rewriting and, you know, just, yeah, a bunch of work in color. Uh, same with the Citadel of Rick's episode. I mean, we oh. we completely did so much. I mean, we did more it's work so on weird. that Every one. Every time you list an episode, I want to be like, oh, that was the best. Oh, yeah. that was the best. Oh, that was the best. <laughs> But I yeah. think I did watch the Vindicators episode the most. You do, man. I had it on my, my phone, mind. and it like, was we, my go-to. We are so wrong every time. Like we always think, oh, this is our worst episode. Oh, like, we it blew was. It. it was fantastic. And then people love it, and we're like, we don't know what we're talking about it's at all. Like this <laughs> meme of like, like this idea that uh, that was my least favorite episode because I made some comment on yeah. my podcast. It was like taken out of context. It was like, like, no, I love that episode. Yeah. Um, we just thought people would hate it. <laughs> we, we did. We did think I it did would, think it would it was be not, not great received. Um, yeah. the, what is it My like? Like you guys were raised on Simpsons. You could see it in the yeah, DNA look, I got of the a, show. I got a Simpsons tattoo. You see that? That's tremendous. Look at that mess. Oh look at all the false starts yeah, on my, it. It's my favorite. False starts. <laughs> it's so good. On the couch. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, 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 we did, we did. That's why, that, that, dude, that was amazing. That but that show that. is in your DNA as it is in, like, most of America's of DNA. yeah. And now you're making a show that you've got to understand by this point is creeping in to the to DNA. Yeah. It's crazy, yeah. Do you, do you ever, do you approach it differently than you did in the first two seasons, going, like, all right, now, we know people are going to be quoting this to death. We know it enters the culture. We should uh, strategize more. I think every season's a different process, right? Yeah, I think I, th I think we we consider it our our job. I'm sure you probably agree with this that the more that creeps into your head, I don't know, you want to resist that. You yeah. you want because you feel like that's gravity. Right. That's always going to be there. You thinking too much about the audience when you should be thinking about yourself, uh, like like because that's how you'll please the audience. So I, we just sort of like yeah, it's 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 just a weird psychological Sudoku every season to try to like not think about not thinking about not thinking about <laughs> the show being thought about. Right, right, right. Yeah. Well, I, on behalf of, uh, for me, and I'm sure I speak for everyone else, uh, the show is made with, with not just a, 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 we can't curse, a bunch of humor. Oh, shoot. Um, I blew that earlier. But it's also, I know, I fucking blew it too. Oh. It's made with a, a bunch of humor. But at the same time, it's made with a lot of humanity. 
And I always want to thank you guys. Somebody had to go through some painful shit in order for that to hit the screen. And I know it's therapeutic, you get to work it out there, but at the same time, it helps a lot of other people work out stuff while being entertained at the same time. So on behalf of myself and everyone who loves Rick and Morty, we thank you. Give it up for the folks at Rick and Morty, ladies and gentlemen.